Uh, here are some of the biggest moves, the notable trades around the association. And Frank, listening to a lot of the top pundits around the league, they think the big winners today were the Knicks and the Mavericks. I'm going to ask our big pundit what he thinks. <laughs> Funny, Kelly Olynyk ending up on the Toronto Raptors. I think Toronto is trying to acquire every player from the Canadian <laughs> national team. They should try getting Shea Gildas Alexander and Jamal Murray. That would be a good start. I think the Knicks did really well. We talked about Alec Burks on this show a, a week ago or two weeks ago. They needed uh, backcourt help off the bench. He's going to help Bogdanovich, who obviously uh, Net fans are familiar with. I think he's going to help. I think the Knicks did really well. It's like they're... They're not no longer just trying to hit home runs. It's about hitting, you know, singles and doubles, moving runners right. over for a baseball analogy. So I think the Knicks did really, really well. Philadelphia's interesting because Buddy Hield is due to get an extension. I think Indiana looked at it more from a financial standpoint. Philadelphia right now is 4-12 and 12 without Joel Embiid. Were you, so I like that move. Were you surprised by them moving Patrick Beverly, though, to the Bucks? Well, I, I don't think... I think that's a desperation move by the Milwaukee Bucks. I think the Milwaukee Bucks had a lot of players that they were probably looking at, and they couldn't get any of them. I, I don't know what Patrick Beverly really does for you. He's a terrible offensive player. Yes, he'll defend. For me, there's a lot of antics involved in that. I think Milwaukee's in a really tough spot. They're going to have to get better from within. But that trade that they made to get Lou, they got better offensively. Defensively, they've been bad. By the way, they're 1-4. and four since Doc Rivers began coaching. The other interesting move is OKC getting Gordon Hayward. How about this stat? And this is according to Stat News, if you see it on Twitter, really good Twitter account. The last time Gordon Hayward made the All-Star game was in 2017. No current Oklahoma City Thunder players were in the NBA at that time. So that's how, <laughs> A, that's how young the Thunder are. B, that's how long ago it was that Gordon Hayward was in the All-Star game. And I think that's a good move for OKC. You get a veteran player. I think P.J. Washington being on the move with Dallas. Think about Grant Williams. Grant Williams yeah. went down to Dallas. He came from a team that almost went to the finals. Here he's thinking, all right, I'll be in the playoffs with Dallas. Now you're on a, a rebuilding situation in Charlotte. Now, there was a name that was being bandied about out there for a couple of weeks, maybe three or four weeks to be exact. DeJounte Murray, his yeah. name has been, it was linked to the Nets at yep. one point, the Knicks. A lot trying of teams. to bring him to New York. A lot of teams were surrounding ar around DeJounte Murray. Maybe the asking price was too high. He just signed that four-year extension yeah. with the Hawks. Are you surprised that he's still there? You know, if you look at his contract, uh, he had a trade kicker, which would have been a lot of money. So I think teams might have been a little bit worried about taking that on. But it certainly was a name that was out there. Maybe Atlanta right now where they sit. They could still be in, obviously, the play-in tournament. So maybe they're thinking they're going to get better over the second half, get healthier. But this was a team that a few years ago, remember, the Brooklyn Nets lost to Milwaukee in that second-round series. Milwaukee played Atlanta. And Atlanta, ever since then, has really gone down. They started picking that roster apart. They really haven't gotten back to a, to a top level. Maybe that was just a lucky run that they went on that year. I think they gave up a lot to get DeJounte Murray. So if you're going to trade a player like DeJounte Murray after you gave up all those assets to get him, you have to get a lot back to justify moving him. And before we move on from the Sixers, he's not there yet, but there were some rumors about Kyle Lowry, a Philly guy, went to Villanova. Maybe the Sixers are trying to bring him yeah, into yeah. the fold as well. There's a lot of guys in the buyout market right now. Bobby Marks, who does a terrific job, who obviously used to work here for the Nets a long time ago. He's ESPN's uh, front office insider. He had a list of teams that because of the, the where their salary cap is, they cannot get a player in the buyout market if that player is buying out of a contract that was $12 million or more. So that kind of limits, and that's a group that includes the Milwaukee Bucks, the Miami Heat, teams that traditionally have looked at the buyout market as a way to improve the roster. The Golden State Warriors are another team who didn't make a move today. So there's a lot there's a lot of different things that can happen. Also, let's remember to mention Phoenix, because I like, I like them getting Royce O'Neal. And the Lakers didn't make a move yeah. today. However, other rumors are saying if Spencer Dinwiddie does get waived by the Toronto Raptors, the Lakers are one of those teams looking into him, and a reunion possibly with the Mavericks. Yeah, well. and speaking of former Nets, you know, D'Angelo Russell has played really well for the Lakers, so Maybe the asking price was too much if the Lakers were going to trade D'Angelo Russell. It's going to have to happen for the Lakers from the team that they have. Remember, they went to the conference finals last year. They had the ability to do that if Anthony Davis and LeBron James could stay healthy. The biggest issue the Lakers will have, if they end up in the play-in tournament, it makes it that much more difficult. That happened last year, and you can tell they were run down because guess what? The best player in their team is still 39-year-old LeBron James. One more for you before we hit the break, Frank. Is it unfair, do you think, to have teams play on deadline day. You know, it, it's a fair point to make because now that so many teams 
are not only fighting for playoff positioning, you have a team like the Brooklyn Nets, which wants to get into the play-in tournament. So now a big game tonight against a stacked Cleveland Cavalier team. You're depleted, and now the guys that you acquired aren't even here yet. So it, it's unfair for a lot of teams. I don't know what the solution would be. You know, maybe c can you do it on a night where there are no games? That that would make sense. But the NBA, remember, because you because of the in-season tournament. So that reduces the amount of days that teams play. And there were a couple of Sundays where nobody played, and that was due to the in-season tournament. So, Chris, you've got to make up those games somehow. Unfortunately for the Nets, they kind of get, you know, they're at a disadvantage because the trade deadline was today at 3.